The respiratory system is an organ system that functions in gas exchange, bringing in oxygen and disposing carbon dioxide for cellular respiration. Some primitive animals, such as sponges, cnidarians, and flatworms, don't have a respiratory surface. They exchange gas through simple diffusion, since every cell is close to the external environment. Fish breathe through gills, which are outfoldings of bodies that are suspended in water. Ventilation is the movement of respiratory medium over the respiratory surface. Fish ventilate by moving water over gills or moving gills over water. Fish gill use a countercurrent exchange system, where blood flows in the opposite direction to water passing over the gills, which maximizes diffusion since blood is always less saturated with oxygen than the water it meets. Insects breathe through the tracheal system, which consists of tiny branching tubes known as the tracheae that penetrate the body. Spiracles are external opening to tracheae, which supply oxygen directly to the body cells. Which means that insects have separate respiratory and circulatory systems. The circulatory system mainly transports nutrients and waste instead of oxygen. Most vertebrates breathe through lungs, which are infoldings of the body surface, with alveoli as the site of gas exchange. In humans, the air is inhaled through the nostril into the nasal cavity. The air then travels to the pharynx. Which is an upper area of the throat that is common to both the respiratory and the digestive systems. The air then travels to the larynx, which is also known as the voice box. It consists of an elastic band of muscle that vibrate to produce sounds. Next, the air travels down the trachea or the windpipe, which is a cartilaginous tube consists of pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. The trachea then branches into two bronchi, each leading to a lung. Each bronchus further branches into bronchioli, and gas exchange takes place at the terminus of the tiniest bronchioli in small air sacs known as the alveoli, which is densely wrapped by capillaries that lead to both the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary veins. The tidal volume is the volume of air inhaled with each breath. The vital capacity is the maximum tidal volume. And the residual volume is the air remained after exhalation. The total lung capacity can be calculated by adding the vital capacity and the residual volume. Lung cells produce surfactant that lowers the surface tension, which keeps the alveoli from collapsing after exhalation. Amphibians, such as a frog, ventilates its lungs by positive pressure breathing, which forces air down the trachea through the buccal cavity. On the other hand, mammals ventilate by negative pressure breathing, which pulls air into the lungs by varying volume and air pressure. During inhalation, the diaphragm contracts, the rib cage moves up, air pressure decreases, and the lung expands. During exhalation, the diaphragm relaxes and the rib cage moves down, increasing the air pressure and decreasing the lung volume. Birds have eight or nine air sacs. That allow air to pass through the lungs in one direction only, so that incoming fresh air does not mix with air that has already carried out gas exchange. Parabronchi are tiny tubes in birds' lungs that are highly efficient in gas exchange. Each breath requires two cycles of inhalation and exhalation to ensure no mixing of air. Respiratory pigments are proteins that transport oxygen. Insects have hemocyanin with copper as the oxygen binding component. Mammals have hemoglobin with iron as the oxygen binding component, contained within the red blood cells. In humans, the medulla oblongata regulates the rate and depth of breathing in response to pH changes and carbon dioxide levels in the cerebrospinal fluid. The pons regulates the breathing tempo, and sensors in the aorta and carotid arteries monitor oxygen and carbon dioxide concentrations in the blood, exerting secondary control over breathing. Carbon dioxide from the respiring cells diffuses into the blood and is transported either in the blood plasma bound to hemoglobin or as bicarbonate ions, which are synthesized by CAH or carbonate anhydrase. The respiratory distress syndrome is common in premature infants when the lungs don't have sufficient amount of surfactant, causing alveoli to collapse, leading to severe breathing problems. Pneumonia refers to lung inflammation, which causes thick fluid to accumulate in alveoli, making gas exchange difficult. Pulmonary tuberculosis is caused by bacterial attack on the lungs, which greatly reduces lung elasticity, 
leading to severe coughing, constant fever, and chest pains. Pulmonary fibrosis occurs when the lung tissue becomes damaged and scarred. Fibrous connective tissue builds up in the lungs, causing difficulty in breathing. Chronic bronchitis is inflammation and irritation of the airways in our lungs, which causes mucus to build up and once again leading to difficulty in breathing. Emphysema occurs when alveoli burst and fuse into enlarged air spaces, reducing the surface area for gas exchange. Asthma occurs when airways are inflamed due to irritation and bronchioles constrict due to muscle spasms, leading to wheezing, coughing, chest tightness, and shortness of breath.